Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a hidden masterpiece or two. Well, you know, we use the term masterpiece rather loosely in conventional jargon, but we're talking about really, really good music by a composer who we've discussed recently. And one of you mentioned this particular CD, and I thought to myself, gosh, I really ought to talk about it here. I reviewed it already at ClassicsToday.com, and you can go look at that you know, when it came out. I liked it a lot then, and I like it even more now. It's Vittorio Giannini's Fourth Symphony and Piano Concerto, featuring pianist Gabriella Imre, who plays really, really well, and the Bournemouth Symphony under Daniel Spaulding. This is a wonderful disc dedicated to a composer who we barely know. One of the few things we know about Giannini is his band music, particularly his Third Symphony, which has one of the catchiest tunes. And one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I just couldn't get that tune from the Third Symphony out of my head. It's stuck, you know. I mean, oh my God. And it's funny when a guy who's virtually unknown writes a tune that you can't get out of your head. You think, well, he must have written some other ones. And he did. He really did. The Piano Concerto was premiered in 1937. And this recording, this Naxos recording, is apparently only its second ever performance, which just blows my mind completely. I mean, Giannini was a... a lyrical composer, a, a bel cantist in a way, uh, you know, from his Italian heritage, like so many of the American Italian neoclassicists, classicists. you know, there's Flagello and Persichetti and Piston, who was Pistoni, and Peter Menon, who was like Menini or Menagini or Meningitis. Or... The bottom line is they, they all were very, very gifted composers. They were all neoclassical composers in their, in their style and writing in traditional forms using to one degree or another, rather traditional harmony, but doing it really, really well. Like the English school of the 20th century, too. Superbly well-trained, talented musicians who, if the atonal interruption had never occurred, would have f duped it out for, you know, the the right to survive and, and enhance posterity with their works. And they deserve to do it now. The sad thing is that because the atonal interruption is done interrupting, there's a whole new bunch of younger people duking it out for the right to contribute to posterity. And so these guys who had virtually no opportunity to be performed in their lifetimes or given the acclaim that they deserved, they're as good as forgotten. And we've got to go back and fix that. We really have to fix it. So the Piano Concerto is a Verismo work, 40 minutes full of, full of blood and guts, great tunes and fistfuls of notes in a finale, which is a burlesque, actually. Very interesting. Has a sense of humor a little bit, a little sardonic bite to it. A little bit like, you know, Dohnani or, you know, Ernst von Dohnani's sardonic music, you know, within a the romantic tradition, he was able to take a stab here and there. And it's just wonderfully brilliant. And it's full of great material. You, you just got to hear it. If you want a big boned, romantic, you know, let it all hang out concerto, then you're going to like this. And it doesn't sound like Rachmaninoff. And it doesn't sound like Tchaikovsky. It, it, it doesn't sound like anybody else particularly, but it's in the style. And it's a wonderful work. Now, the fourth symphony is is quite concise. It's three movements, about 25 minutes long or so. And it's in a much more acerbic style than the third symphony. It's not as obviously tuneful, but it's really powerful stuff. It's more expressively intense. It begins with a, a groping, highly contrapuntal, kind of angst-filled first movement with beautiful tunes in it. I mean, it does have like a lovely second subject and whatnot. It, 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 it has the melodies, but it's also full of Sturm und Drang. It's fun to listen to. It really is. It's exciting. I mean, he's he really knows where he's going as a composer. The music has real directionality to it. You know, you feel it's driving towards its conclusion. The central movement is a beautiful, beautiful slow movement that rises. It's just a, it's a very simple wave. It, it starts out plaintively, rises to this epic, huge climax, and then ebbs away. And it's so well judged. It's just 
perfectly judged. Now the finale returns to the the sort of angst of the first movement with some really herky-jerky melodic material, and you kind of wonder what's going to happen. And then guess what comes in? Of course you knew it. The big lyrical tune comes sweeping in at the end and, and drives everything away to a triumphal apotheosis full of cymbal crashes and swacks on the tam-tam, which are very well registered here, I might add. And it's, and it's a brilliant ending. It's so satisfying. It's concise, but it's a complete statement it has the, the total, the, to, the full package of, you know, expressive tension, relaxation. The victory at the end doesn't sound hollow. It's really a good work by a good composer. And th these, these, this is a marvelous recording. So if you haven't heard it, it's still around. You can download it. You can get the physical product. You should. You should hear it. It's quite splendid. Um, give Giannini a chance. You know he wrote seven symphonies. And the only ones we can hear are three and four. I, we really need to hear more Giannini. We really, really do. Somebody's got to get a hold of them and champion the music and get it down on disc before it's too late. We just have to do it. I understand, actually, from a, a colleague of mine in Germany who likes this whole school, German, uh, Giannini and his student Flagello um, and you know some other of that, that crowd, that his music is very hard to source from the publisher because you know it, it, it just... His family had some of it, and some of it got published, and the publisher doesn't particularly care. It's just, it's, it's, it's a project to try and bring his music to life, but it deserves to be dug up and rescued forthwith. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.